Greetings and salutations all you folks out there, and I gotta say a Merry Christmas as well. It is New Year's Eve in the United States, probably about to be Christmas for a lot of the guys who are going to be watching this, but Merry Christmas nonetheless. I get one more day to enjoy it. Haha. -ha. Um, hopefully most of you guys have gotten off of work, you're having a good time with family, living life to the fullest, and overall enjoying yourselves. I got a uh, epic sentence for you just to fill out the time. This is going to be a longer cast. Hopefully you'll have, uh, this will give you something to do while all of your family is off doing other random things that you don't really want to be a part of. Let's go ahead and introduce the teams and we will jump straight into it. We've got Voodoo on the southern side taking Seraphim on the rock. We've got Foley on front as Aeon. This must have been an all randoms game. Lord Monster taking Cybran on the beach. And Kosher taking Aeon in the rear position. You know, maybe it, it wasn't actually random because Voodoo and Kosher always play together. So this must have actually been a normal game. We've got Cassius, I think. Yes, Cassius with the name change. UEF on front for the north. Desync, hopefully not indicative of this game. Uh, Aeon on the rock. We've got Brian going Aeon Air and Dawn going Cybran Beach. And here we have the nastiness of a first bomber. That is an absolutely soul crushing way to start your game as front. When you lose your engineers, you've got no power. I wish you would have ground fired in between these two engineers so it could have actually done some real damage, but. Sadly, that was not the case. He is, however, going to snag these engineers in one shot. And there is the mobile anti-air. So that is a complete and total stall for Cassius. And that is going to be pretty hard to come back from. He is going to get a lot of mass, but that is going to pretty much cripple his entire game. I gotta say, in advance of this cast, two things. Number one, I am sorry, I do have a bit of a stopped up nose and a tiny bit of a cough, so there may be some uh, silence gaps in which you can assume I'm saving your eardrums and maybe a little bit of a nasally sound, but I cannot help it. And secondly, this replay does desync at some point. Um, I don't know exactly what minute it is, but it has been watched completely through by one of the players here and it does not change the outcome of the game or anything that happens. So I have my screw this pop-up mod at the ready and we will let the little white chat scroll by and enjoy the game regardless. Up here at the front, of course, we've got the mass grab. Cassius doing his trademark point defense at the mid, missing out on some reclaim, but he is going to snag it with, well, he used to have engineers in the back, but that first bomber kind of obliterated that idea. And so he is going to try to snag as much as he can while playing catch up. And then on the left, Voodoo did get his island. And there has not yet been an island grab on the right hand side. This is a 1200 versus an 1100 and neither of them do I recognize as normal sentence players. Oh, that's painful to watch. So many engineers being killed. Desync doing a phenomenal job of helping out his teammate. This bomber is still up here, still denying expansion. You can see down here, look at Cassius on the rank boards. He's half the score of the other player, actually one third the score of the other player and far, far behind. But this bomber will help even things up just a little bit. It's too late to make a huge difference, but it will slow him down and hopefully give him a chance to come back. Let's look at uh, Cassius is reclaiming, you got 2400 and Foley 5700. So that point defense was an absolute waste of time, effort, and mass, and uh, pretty much screwed over the northern team reclaim wise. On the southern side, we had Engineer and Mantis drop. That was very nicely executed by Dawn, pushing a whole lot of interceptors to clean up the airspace over here, dropping all of this stuff, getting the point defense online to eliminate that Tech 1 factory as fast as possible. Going to kill off that artillery after firing only one shot, which did not kill the engineers. The engineers are going to build a land factory of their very own. So that was a successful island grab for Dawn. Very well done. Got another bomber coming down from desync. That is going to pound away at Foley's base, but there are a whole lot of interceptors over here from Voodoo, and hopefully they will uh, 
not let too much damage be done. Bomber coming in, going to go after, well, attempt to drop on the engineers over here, but in reality all that did was screw up the pathfinding. So no bomb was dropped and those were immediately nailed. And here comes the naval drop from Dawn. This is Dawn's standard play. I kind of tend to make jokes about Dawn's naval play. I don't mean anything bad about her as a person. But Dawn is the kind of person that uh, their build is entirely early game oriented and they always do the same build. So she will push Navy ultra hard and she either wins by 20 minutes or has lost the game after 25 minutes. It seems to play out that way every single time. The build is so strong early and it's incredibly early game oriented, but that weakens the eco and weakens the standing for later in the game. So if it doesn't succeed, you can pretty much assume that Dawn is going to lose the water over here. She may stave it off for a while, and I have seen on very rare occasion her come back from that, but it is not often the case. Laying down torp launchers to prevent this from getting sniped off by frigates. And then going to start laying down Tech 1 Naval Factories. The drop is still there should she decide to load more engineers in it and get a stronger spam online. Frigates over here doing a really good job of mopping up all of this air and did actually kill the factory that was begun here. These engineers are going to need to get out of the way otherwise they're going to get shot down. Looks like the Tech 1 artillery that managed to not kill anything really is going to get shot down by those Tech 1 uh, mobile artillery there. Fervor's very good at dealing damage to buildings. And Cassius is a whopping 15 mass income as compared to 61 for Foley. And then also about a third the power income. So. Yeah, front is pretty well completely screwed. Foley taking advantage of that to pull some drops up here. It was a very, very awesome choice of action that is going to mess with the air player a bit, but it was not exactly placed in an optimal position, and that is going to allow point defense to go down before the units have a chance to move into position. And here we have a strap bomber rush. Kosher is very, very late on his air, and Brian is actually a little bit early. That's quite impressive to have a strap bomber and three ASF out by 11 minutes. I am impressed, especially considering the fact that he did not get any early mass. I think he sacrificed Eco to do that. He still has quite a few Tech 1 mass extractors. That strap bomber is going to come in and even up the game on the air on the front side of things. It is going to bomb out some mass extractors, go right through all of these interceptors, and I think that strap bomber is about to get dropped unless he stays on a very straight flight pattern, because uh, in the turns, the interceptors do catch up to you. Now, the air factory is partially locked by these ASF, but one ASF did get through. It's going to get shot down, aiming directly for kosher. I don't know that that's the smartest thing he could have done because he's going to lose this strap bomber. Ah! Strap bomber hit the interceptors with the bomb and it's going to get shot down. Kosher is incredibly lucky on that one. He is still behind in air. He is locked, but... And that is a kill. Sorry about that, guys. Cassius did die to these OP obsidians and the fire of Foley's ACU combined with some torp launchers here built to uh, peg the ACU when he went into the water. Oh! Well that's interesting. Sentence is played full share 99.9% .9 of the time but apparently uh, Voodoo hosted this and he hosted it no share. So that means Front has disintegrated, not that they lost anything much because Front was already in an extremely bad position and the northern team is going to have to overcompensate. Sorry about that guys, a little bit of a dead space there, just like I was describing in the beginning of the cast. Got a strap bomber, a second strap bomber out for Brian. He is hovering that around in the mid, not sure where he's headed with that. And we have a whole lot of Tech 1 subs, tons of torp defense, anti-air, and all kinds of other things in place for Dawn, but
but these frigates are going to attempt to bypass the production and head directly for the Tech 2 factory coming up in the rear. However, this is not going to work out because there are a substantial amount of Tech 1 subs in the water that are going to thin out the frigate count before they even get across. Additionally, there is going to be a destroyer built by the time the frigates hit. I think, I think, coming in range now, and pop, destroyer. There we go, right on time. Strap Bomber headed down towards mid. I think that may have been a hit on Foley. Not entirely sure. Don't know why Brian is continually targeting terrible things with the Strap Bombers. If he would have gone for Eco instead of the ACUs on those two instances, then I think he would have actually done a substantial amount of damage to the Southern team. Possibly irreparable damage. Did that Destroyer die? Oh, no. It's down here. Okay, cleaning up with Tech 1 subs and Torpedo Defense sending the Destroyer down to harass mid. Very nice choice from Dawn that is going to help secure this that is causing all of these problems. Not a pretty sight to behold. Dawn throwing down some Point Defense, trying to get everything together. She needs to overcharge those Obsidians. Point Defense dying as soon as it's done. And yeah, I'm going to have to run away from that. Another strap bomber out here to the right. Brian keeps pushing out the strap bombers. He is very, very far ahead of Kosher in Eco. 195 versus 130. Has more ASF, has a strap bomber, and overall is just poning Kosher. We've got a Solus over here as well that is standing by to assist should the need arise versus these Seraphim units. And then. These brave little engineers who have survived everything so far at 16 minutes into the game get dropped by some Tech 1 tanks that are just going to be too much for... Oh my goodness. That was so close. That point defense almost finished. That would have been brilliant. But sadly, it did not. At least the Mantis are going to be able to reclaim the wreckage after everything is cleared out. Got some Tech 2 gunships coming out from Brian that's going to help his teammate clean up those units right there. And we've got a large, very large Tech 2 spam coming from Desync that is going to help secure the neck here. Now, normally the land investment here would actually be very harmful to the Navy slot because uh, you're investing into land while the other while your opponent is investing into 100% Navy, but in this case it actually works out because as you can see up here he's building blazes and those are going to be able to jump into the water and assist the navy so he, these are a dual purpose unit going to work out very nicely got five destroyers count them five destroyers moving in mercies from desync not sure what the plan is there. Apparently they're headed for the destroyers. The destroyers don't have anti-air, so that actually kind of makes sense. But three A ASF are going to completely miss the Mercies, and the Mercies are going to strike, killing three destroyers. That is hilarious. That was so nicely done. Desync, you win. Mega kudos for that. <laughs> also, I think Kosher gets the uh, Strategic Face Palm Award for the game for missing Mercies with 3 ASF with no air resistance. That was, that was pretty funny. That fail right there is going to allow Dawn to actually stay in the water. That was facing overwhelming odds from all these destroyers, but he did get she did get away with keeping all of these Tech 1 subs and bringing her Salem and cruisers back onto the front lines. Got more Salems moving in back here. Unfortunately, there are still a whole lot of destroyers over here. Not the critical mass necessary to completely wipe out Navy, but definitely enough to kill these three and cause a whole lot of problems if, uh, if Dawn does not get the hell out of Dodge. And over here on the right-hand side, we have Naval Engagement, the first major naval battle that is going to be hit by a whole lot of Vespers and some Exoduses. Is, is, is. Those T1 subs are not going to stand a chance. That was a waste of mass to try to field them out in front. Vespers and destroyers are going to shred them. And then here we see 
excellent strategy executed by desync he has bypassed the navy going directly for the build power this is what you want to damage this is what you want to kill because you can pick off the naval units as you will and as i'm thinking that that is epic uh he changes course to go after the navy instead and foley gets wiped out by tech three torp bombers kosher not following in but kosher pulling a brilliant turn around brian's asf so that's one player eliminated but it's not the strongest player so that's not an auto win and air was lost in exchange but i think brian is going to come back because he does have a vastly superior mass income he just needs to get his power generators online so that he can convert all of that mass that he has into asf spam i would say about eight minutes game time and brian will uh be out producing kosher by probably 1.5 to 1 or so if not a little more down here we're going to see a naval loss i think unless something magical happens this is where i i hope desync watches this if desync had pushed all of those hover tanks into this production he would have won because lord monster has made a critical error he has a lot of build power but he only has one tech 2 factory therefore if you kill off all of his tech 1 engineers and eliminate his build power he will not be able to reproduce his build power very quickly at all he will have to take the time to build more factories or he will have to take the time to build all of those engineers again out of that single factory and that will take him quite some time he, he may have lost the navy up here desync you may have had to withdraw but once you wipe out the build power you have all of your build power and more eco you could have rebuilt your forces easily and at this point in the game a couple minutes after this shenanigan right here you would have been steamrolling him instead of falling into full retreat and trying to rely on your incoming wave of destroyers to save you from the mayhem that's happening right here. You're still going to win overall, but you would have won about four or five minutes faster if you had extended the hover tanks to begin with. It looks like desync is king of the eco at the moment. He's pulling 359 mass. A lot of that thanks to getting the mid mass extractors and all of the reclaim from in there. He's pushing a totally ludicrous amount of hover into the northern ocean, trying to save Dawn. And here is what I was talking about with Dawn. Dawn had the very strong early push, had units out, had survival, got the island, didn't win by 20 minutes, and now we're here at 25 minutes watching her get pushed out of the water. So. Yeah, that is the problem with early oriented builds. If you fail, you are screwed. That is just about all there is to it, barring some extremely good... Well, what have we here? There is a fire beetle. Drop. It does not have stealth on it, I don't think. Brian has built... Either it was given... Ah, there is stealth. He was either given some fire beetles or he has a Tech 2 Cybern factory and built himself some fire beetles. I think he was given fire beetles. Nope, there it is right there, Tech 2 land factory. He has built some fire beetles and he is winging his way far, far, far south. He looks like he's going for Lord Monster, going to try to pull a fire beetle snipe. Question is, is there Omni and will Kosher see that coming? There is Stealth, so it's going to be hard, and they do not have Omni. So they're not going to see that for the last second because his trajectory right here has no units in the way unless there is a happy happenstance coincidence. Um, well, that was repetitively redundant. That allows this transport to get spotted. He needs to move, though like El Pronto, because that is going to waste. There it is. He's moving away now. Got Scout coming across just to double check the location of that ACU. I get the feeling that we're about to see a death. And the drop is confirmed right next to the ACU. And I have to keep an eye on that. Got a lot of hover tanks pushing out for Brian, using that tremendous mass advantage to assist his teammates. He has a lot of income compared to Kosher. Kosher still sitting on uncapped T2 mexes. And here comes the drop right there. Does Lord Monster have overcharge? He does not. That is going to be game. 
right there for Lord Monster. Holy cow, that's embarrassing when you die to fire beetles, especially in an instance like this. And that is going to leave the entire right hand side empty, completely devoid of any form of defense, leaving desync to spam whatever he wants. And I imagine he's probably going to start pushing torrents immediately. Let me see. Um, I cannot tell from the outline of that unit. Nope, it's battleships. I would swap to torrents because they have greater reach. Oh my, no. Voodoo immediately dropping a Tech 3 factory upgrade over here. And he's going to start building battleships. So there still is a fight. If they can grab the reclaim. Ah, dropping ACUs in the water. They say, we're not going to get fire beetles sniped. Hell no. And these guys are buddies. They are in chat together. I am 100% positive, and they are very good players. So they may not play settings all the time. They may not know the meta of the map, and uh, Brian could probably sneak some things past them, but I think now that they have the whole map to themselves, they've got all the eco to themselves, and they've got all that reclaim to suck up, I think they can actually work some magic here. We may see a good comeback on this. Looks like Voodoo is king of the eco now. He does have very extremely high mass income, and he's about to get all of this reclaim as well, so we're going to have to see what he does with that. And Sniffle Break. Man, I hate having a cold. Okay. All of these hover units kind of teaming up on the shore. Hover is more effective if you swarm it up and then push in, as opposed to streaming it in. And we've got Restorers closing in on the northern side. I think the number of ASF is roughly even. What do we got here? We've got 151 versus 128 plus Restorers. So that is actually just about dead even set match, but we've got full production for Brian online. <clears throat> right next to this area and I'm about to lose my voice I sure hope I don't before the end of this cast that is going to swoop in on these ASF a bit of a bad turn there kosher pulling a stall and swinging back around is gonna even the battle up some but Brian pulling a stall of his own separating his ASF force into two groups one of them on the restores one of them kind of stalling for way too long not sure what kind of order that was Brian regrouping going to engage and I think Brian is going to win this by an absolute hair yes he is some bad turns some good terms turns overall well executed by Brian so that is going to be an air win for the north Brian back in control of the air 100% ASF restore on the southern side trying to stall out these units but kosher is spamming his restores one by one into a bank of three cruisers which you will recognize as the worst plan ever so voodoo is going to lose his naval emplacement over there there's no hope for this side at this point, I would think, barring a scathe is coming online and judging by the fact that there is no Cybran tech, I would say that is a very, very highly unlikely situation. Technically, they could capture some Cybran tech. Actually, that would have been funny to see a drop over here and capture a Cybran engineer. But, um, yeah. That's probably not going to happen. And here we have the sentence elitism that makes everyone hate sentence players. Right there. Henceforth, I will be known as Brian the Christ Child. Don't be a jackass. Nobody likes that. Ugh. All right. Down here, Kosher using Tech 1 Engineers is pretty much his only uh, source of build power. I would strongly encourage Kosher to do something a little more like this. Because these guys have 120 build power, which replaces... And my brain just completely disengaged on math. That's going to be 24 Tech 1 Engineers. So each one of those replaces 24 Tech 1 Engineers. A total of 5 totals out to about 100 Tech 1 Engineers. You get the adjacency from 4 power generators, drastically reducing your power costs. 
and overall it works out really 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 well i would still keep one factory super heavily assisted so that you can um so that you can rush production on say a few strap bombers some air scout streams or whatever else you need in that instance but i would shift my main asf production to a template such as this and there is the desync that is what I was waiting for. Let it pop up a couple of times and we will... I know, it was a single desync. Very nice, very nice. The person that sent this to me did not mention that it was a single. A lot of times um, in a replay like this, you'll have a single desync like that when someone leaves. And as long as there's not a second one, nothing has changed. When you get the, the continual desync pop-up window is when you 99% of the time have a problem but on very rare occasions, the game will still actually hold true through a desync. So you guys who send me replays, always check for that desync window. If it pops up once, you're totally fine. If it pops up a bunch of times, you got to keep watching to make sure things come out like they're supposed to. And there it is again. So, apparently the single desync window is not the case in this one. But like I said, this one has been checked and will hold true. Got a megalith wading out into the water. This is what I love about the megalith. It can kind of chill out here and uh, be 90% underwater with a very small area above water, but it can still fire with both shoulder cannons because the cannons are top mounted. It's pretty funny looking and I think it makes a cool weapon. Cybern has the coolest stuff, I gotta say. It may not be the strongest, I may not play with them all the time, I don't have a specific faction preference, but as far as the cool factor goes, Brackman definitely did himself proud on this one. I'm going to continue to pound away at those naval units and maybe get some uh, battleships taken out of the picture as well. Dawn is pretty infamous for doing this. That is her classic uh, rebuttal to losing Navy. If you don't take her out when you win the Navy, she just goes straight into Megalith spam after she finishes ecoing. So that is pretty much to be expected. And if you're not careful about it, she'll get two or three Megaliths in the water. The combined torp damage pushes up over actually it's dang close to a thousand torp damage between three megaliths and uh, she will just kind of chill out just sit there in the water and slowly eat your navy so that can be a problem got the torrents coming in now finally the navy on the south has been completely won with no chance of coming back these torrents are going to give the Aeon navy the ability to reach very very far inland actually the longest naval reach of any naval unit outside of the strategic subs and speaking of strategic subs I wish there were a couple in this game just so I could point ah there's one right there the tac missile launcher on the strategic sub is actually very handy they have the volley fire if you get two or three of them together that are volley firing at once you can actually have a pretty dang good chance of taking out nuke defense um, with the volleys of TAC missiles from the subs and then after you take out the nuke defense you can nuke it. So it's a pretty cool tool. One very vastly underutilized. Most people don't use it and I don't understand why. Because it is, because it is a very incredibly handy tool. Now where did that other, other... Ah, there it is. Out in the water. I was about to say there's two megaliths now. They're escaping the surface damage of this navy which is vastly superior to the surface damage and range of the megaliths but while they're chillaxing underwater, they only have the torps from three destroyers harming them, so they will be able to take a lackadaisical attitude and slowly devour the navy. 600 DPS on the torps total, not an overwhelming amount, but a very large amount as far as torps go, and they will be able to take these things out. Megalas actually do have the range to contend with T3 sub hunters as well. So uh, those aren't exactly the most effective thing that you can build to counter them. Got torrents coming in now. Those are going to start hammering away at this center base here. And a GC on the way north. Looks like he is headed out into the water there. Probably going to walk up on shore and try to kill Dawn before Dawn can use the Megalus to kill it. Although I don't know how well that plan is going to work. Got restorers out in the water. However, flak. Can you see it? Seraphim cruisers have that awesome flak anti-air, roughly a 50-50 split between flak and direct fire on their anti-air. Not the best at taking down T3 scouts, not the best at taking down uh, T3 torp bombers or strap bombers, but 
throw some gunships at it and these guys will eat you alive by far the best cruisers versus gunship masses I would say the cruisers probably go in order of anti-air effectiveness uh, Aeon and Seraphim tied for different aspects and then probably UEF and then Cybern trailing last because of the slow projectile speed although they do pack in a ton of damage so versus gunships they're not that bad because the gunships are going to be close to target so the slow projectile speed's not going to hurt them as much and here we have the superior range of the torrent you can see that huge range circle there you can actually get a little closer and hit these two the cruiser range of the other factions is not nearly as press as impressive it is going to be about right there max cruiser range so these guys do have a substantial extra chunk of the map at their disposal got these restorers massing up again diving into the battleships instead of going after all of those cruisers we've got two megaliths in the water and a third on the way and those things are just gradually gradually eating away at these battleships I'm gonna start moving out into the water I'm sure in just a moment we've got Dawn in the water with support commanders building harms and that is going to be the establishment of a base of operations It's gonna allow Dawn to secure all of this reclaim and get back into the game and this is uh, this is one of the occurrences where I see Dawn come back. Now she's lost a lot of mass extractors. She's going to have to get those back online, but she's got all this mass to do that with. A huge, huge reclaim field. Um, but this is, uh, if you don't kill Dawn, this this is eventually what happens. She does push Megalus spam if you don't take out her eco or take out her. So kudos to her for getting back into it. Looks like all of the cruisers have been wiped out by the Megalus, and now the restorers are free to roam the wide open plains of the ocean devouring whatever they see and the ticket on the menu today is battleships all right running down the eco line here we've got voodoo with a massive massive lead 528 income on the mass side and then kosher at 342 then the northern team is kind of mixed up desync pulling 482 which is actually closer to voodoo than i would have thought it was and uh brian 384 dawn only 113 but dawn is going to be pulling in ridiculous reclaim numbers momentarily so that is nothing to be concerned about looks like brian dropping an sacu over here is going to rush build spiders I would think that GC's would probably be more effective probably going for the stealth factor because I still don't think that the southern team yeah they 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 may have on me no they don't they do not have on me so that monkey lord would actually be able to run in pretty well and uh, take out whatever it pleases before the uh, line of sight comes in Kosher engaging Brian in air. Brian had a superior number to begin with. It doesn't really matter which way this turn is going to go. Brian's going to win that. Hand over fist. Strictly due to having, you know, half again as many ASF to begin with. Uh, well, actually, that was a very bad turn right there. Kosher was able to gather his ASF up and do a lot more damage than I would have thought he could. And continuing... There's also this flak piece here. Brian stalled his ASF for too long, and the flak on that AS on that cruiser was able to make a huge difference in the air fight. Then we've got these two aircraft carriers here. I did not expect that. Holy cow. Kosher pulled an air win out of that with one good turn and the support of this cruiser here. That was pretty much what won it and there is a ridiculous amount of ASF wrecks in the center here now that is just ludicrous Megalus pursuing the Navy there's a huge bank of Tech 2 torp launchers here laying down fire on these Megalus they're gonna head southwards and hopefully get out of reach of those things before one of those Megalus go down got a full health one right here and 32k left on this one so I don't think it's a terrible worry 
but it is you're gonna wanna you're gonna wanna bring those away from the torp launchers as fast as you can. Looks like this Galactic Colossus is just kinda chilling out over here in the ocean. Not sure what good it's doing over there. Can't fire underwater. Long way to walk. To get anywhere, really. I'm also amazed that there has not been a nuke. Um I am actually kind of flabbergasted by that fact. We're at 41 minutes, and I don't think there's even been a nuke built. There's a nuke defense. No nuke on the northern side. We've got nuke defense down here. And a Yolana Oss! I've not been looking at the bases in too long. Holy kashmoles. But... There are nuke subs over here, just seeing them commented on. I remember those coming out. They are about halfway done building their nukes. So those are going to be able to do some damage. I'm not sure exactly how much. And there is a nuke launcher as well. So it looks like we have moved into the nuke phase. That's not nearly as surprising then that there aren't stationary nukes. Because we do have these four. And there's only one loaded nuke defense down here with one in the chamber so if these four fire together they're going to be able to obliterate this base pretty easily <clears throat> these guys are going to want to bring a lot more nuke defense online there's one almost two loaded over here but with those four nuke subs in the water that could potentially ruin the game for them this Yolana Oss is going to come online and I don't think the southern team has enough eco to over one or does not have enough air to overwhelm and snipe that position. Now we do actually have a problem for Kosher. Kosher had no combat units down here and he's now got a Monkey Lord nearly in his base. May have to switch to Mercy production on this one. Yes, there he is. He's switching to Mercy's, pouring them out as quickly as he can to try to kill this freaking Monkey Lord that's about to mess up his base. He does not want to lose that nuke defense above all else. That is the only one that he has loaded. And Mercy's pouring in. You got Ping going down on the nuke defense, trying to let him know that he needs to kill it. Megala is coming up. Got distracted down there, but you can see the T2 and T3 Torp Bombers combined were able to kill two of the Megalas before this one made sure. And this one is actually going to go down. The GC came out of the water and was able to face off with a Megalith. It did die, but it did do enough damage to help out. And this Megalith is going to go down to Tech 2 gunships, I do believe. It's out of reach of the Torp Bombers now, but it is going to go down to the gunships. And there it goes. And then down here we've got the Monkey Lord was able to kill the probably killed the p gens and then the area of effect from that killed the nuke defense or it assisted in killing the other p gens regardless uh the nuke defense is down and voodoo won the air engagement i would say they have roughly the same amount of asf but uh, he was able to protect the mercies to kill that monkey lord and did not lose air so i would consider that a win we do have another monkey lord however right here and that is headed right for voodoo's base we're about to see the first nuke first yolona os fire coming right up got an experimental bomber going down got an aircraft carrier started over here i thought there was a uh one that was more built than that, but I may have been mistaken. And we've got a whole bunch of strap bombers coming down here. Nuke fired from that sub. I think that one is going to hit. No, strap bombers are for the defense. Only a T2 sub shield there. Defense is going to go down. No! How could you? How could you only have one nuke defense? Ah... And there goes the Yolana Oss, the last hope of the Southern team. Oh, that's painful. Oh, that's painful. You're going to see a carpet nuke here from these four nuke subs. Going to hit four points in the base, but that Yolana Oss did fire. It is going to head up north. Not enough nuke defense to stop it, I think, and it's going to hit the back base. Ugh. 
kind of a wasted nuke, to be honest. That didn't kill enough to make it worth firing the Ilona Oss. But when you think you've got unlimited projectiles, you're just going to start firing at the back. And uh, that is going to be it, I think, for the Southern team. I don't see how they come back from this. They lost so much on that. They're not going to be able to load more nuke defense in time. Desync is loading those nukes at full speed. He does have balanced eco. He's going to be pumping four nukes at a time into this. They're not going to be able to predict where they're coming for, and you're not going to be able to build enough nuke defense to stop it in that amount of time. So I think we're about to see the slow winding down of this game. So sad to see. I was excited about that Yelona Oz. That was so awesome, and it did get to fire, but then it immediately died to a submarine nuke, which is like, yeah. That's the strongest nuke in the game versus the weakest nuke in the game, and the weakest nuke is going to kill it. So kind of... Uh, Kind of ironic that the Alana Oz was built and the nuke subs won the game, but so goes it in Supreme Commander. And here we see the rally of the Navy with the assistance of all of these torque bombers and all of these gunships, but I don't think it's going to be enough. They're going to fall prey to all of these harms that are in the water. And I just really seriously doubt that this is going to do any good. I think this is probably just voodoo in his final war cry reaching out for somebody to kill but it's not gonna happen Brian flooding the area with flak and blazes is gonna do a dang good job of suppressing this naval push and then I think it is going to be it no way these guys are gonna come back from this Got a Galactic Colossus coming in from Brian moving towards the back. It's just a matter of killing the ACUs now, and they have nothing in between them and potential attacks. A single nuke, some tort bombers, whatever these guys want to throw down there, it is going to take those guys out. So let's just kind of chill out here for a second and see what it is that kills them. I think I can get a couple more. No, nope, I'm at plus one. Can't get any more sim speed out of it. Too many engineers assisting and doing things. And yeah, so sad. This right here is the biggest lowering of sim speed in this game. There have been instances, there was one game that I was in where um, we had all of those things assisting and I brought on about a dozen T3 air factories at the same time because I was upgrading tech ones and I control K'd about 400 engineers and we actually went up two sim speeds when my engineers stopped assisting. It was pretty ridiculous. NG Mod is one of the best things that has happened to, to FAF. Um, it does provide a whole host of benefits, both in land spam potential and in lag reduction when you're talking error production. So uh, there's really no good reason not to use it and uh, use it to its potential because this engineer spam is the old way to play things and it's not nearly as effective anymore as using your templates. Something that I do a lot, uh, because I do kind of like the focus build power because it allows you to condense your stuff behind one nuke defense early in the game. Um, you can use uh, you can use tech 3 engineers from Aeon instead of tech 1. Like, take up a couple of uh, factories, use them for, to spam Tech 3 engineers, and use that for your build power. You still get the focused, concentrated build power on one factory that you like, but you literally use one-sixth of the engineers for the same build power. And Tech 3 engineers are not only as mass efficient, they are ever so slightly more mass efficient than Tech 1 engineers' mass to build power. So you can get away with using those and they will actually pay for themselves um, eventually over the cost of the two Tech 3 factories to produce them. And that right there is game, set, and match. Got all of those nukes coming in to different locations to try and prevent the ACUs from getting away by running in any one direction, but first nukes got it. So that is going to be game over. Well done by the Northern team, overcoming a ridiculous stack, and uh, I, 
statistically speaking, that was a huge stack, but honestly, I don't think it was as bad as they thought it was because we have several dedicated sentence players on the northern side, and then Voodoo and Kosher, while they are very extremely skilled, and both of them do play sentence some, they do not exclusively play sentence, and so uh, it's kind of that whole deal where a 1500 who only plays one map can usually beat an 1800 that plays a variety of maps when the 1500 is on his home turf. So that's kind of working against the balance equation on this, but still very nicely done by the Northern team. Kudos to Desync for a few excellent, excellent naval maneuvers and overall well played. All right, guys, that is going to wrap up this game for me. An extremely long cast right before Christmas. I hope you guys enjoy it and Merry Christmas to you. May your new year be awesome. You get everything that you ever wanted from Santa Claus and uh, hopefully those of you who do so did not spend too much money and can afford to pay your rent next month. Alrighty guys, I'm going to get out of here. Thanks so much for watching. I will see you in the next one.